introduce our fourth presenter, Emma Rojas. Emma is a foreign languages major with a concentration in Spanish and a minor in geography. She's currently a senior and hoping to pursue a career in medicine upon graduation. She enjoys learning about nature, animals, and flying. Could you please welcome Emma to the stage? Good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Emma Rojas, and I'm a Spanish major, as he said, uh, and I'm focusing on geography with this presentation. And tonight, I want to thank Ron Mahabir, a dear friend of mine and a, a dear colleague of mine from the Department of Geography and Information Science. He's not here today, but um, I'm dedicating this to him because he pushed me to do this. So um, <laughs> uh, as a native Californian, I really care about, about my state. So I'm focusing on the drought that's been occurring for the last few years. And I am, it, it's to me, it's I think one of the most, uh, the, the biggest catastrophic environmental uh, effect that it will have on the state uh, in this 21st century. So um, let's start. Uh, this image is of Lake Oroville in 2011. And here it used to be 97% full of water. This is it now, uh, three, three years later. And what used to be a lake is now a river. Uh, again, Lake Oroville. You can see the water cascading down the Oroville Dam. And um, again, it used to be full. Now the structure is not close to the water's edge. Another picture from that same year from Folsom Lake. And um, after. This is it now. And it's not Folsom Lake now, it's Folsom Reservoir. And uh, uh, crews are now, uh, shortly after this picture was taken, crews started working on uh, a wreckage that they found and bodies from a plane crash that happened 50 years ago. And uh, this is because the, they were able to see this because the water levels decreased uh, 50 feet. Um, the California drought is occurring in three types of uh, droughts, meteorological, agricultural, and hydrologic. And its history, 2014 was the third driest uh, year in, uh, in 119 years of record. Uh, warmest year on record and it had a cost of 2.2 billion and seven, 17,100 jobs were, were lost. And the Central Valley is the hardest hit. And why does this matter? California is one of the biggest uh, food production uh, states and it holds 25% of our milk production and cream. And l alone, almonds uh, take 1.1 uh, gallons per almond to produce. So that's a lot of water. And uh, of course, the reshuffling of the country's population will be something that's going to be of a big effect on the whole entire country. Impacts, blazing fires. Of course, everybody sees this in the news all the time. Wildlife, uh, some species are becoming extinct. Lifestyle changes and aesthetics, no more green lawns. And health problems, I think that's the most important to me, uh, loss of human life because of uh, heat waves and um, not enough water to hydrate everybody. And also, uh, anxiety, you know, there will be less recreational activities for the people, and uh, it's just going to be tremendously getting worse. And uh, this is a picture of, um, uh, my friends started doing this car pledge, uh, dirty car pledge, so they don't wash their car for several weeks, and it, it, they get really serious. <laughs> um, but on a sadder note, of course, uh, our endangered coho salmon uh, are dying because their rivers are not connecting to the sea anymore, so they're no longer able to spawn. Um, possible solutions. In this presentation, I'll focus on nuclear desalination, and these are other possible solutions, but um, to me, I don't think they're going to be very um, possible or, or smart ideas. Uh, there are two types, one that extracts seawater from pressuring water, um, and the other one extracting salt from pressuring the water, and the other one is basically boiling it. Um, and it's not new, many Middle Eastern countries are using this and it, their, their technology is advanced. I think that we should use their examples and use it in this country because um, we, can, we can, I mean, California is a, is a desert after all. So it has a lot of the agriculture that the Middle East has. And um, it's extremely en energy intensive and of course it increases greenhouse gas emissions. Um, these are some of the countries, and Jordan is one of the examples that we should follow because it's one of the driest in that region. And also their nuclear power plants, power plants create hydrogen-fueled cell, cell cars. And since California is a green state, I think that they should use their nuclear power, power plants to create not only the desalination, but also 
um, you use this energy that they're producing with the, um, oh God, with the, uh, <laughs> with um, creating uh, safe cars and green cars. <laughs> Thank you very much. And Saudi Arabia has the largest desalination plant in the world. Uh, again, it requires so much energy. This is um, Diablo Canyon power plant, and it uh, was originally built to withstand a 6.75 earthquake, but is now modified to withstand a 7.5 earthquake. And it has a cool system where it is able to shut down properly in case it detects earthquakes. Um, origins for cross-country pipeline. They're thinking of make, making a pipeline that will run from east coast to west coast and one from the Great Lakes to the California, but you know, this is gonna be very costly. How are they gonna put the water going through the Rocky Mountains? You know, it's gonna create, it's gonna need a lot of energy to pump that water up. Um, uh, again, the water distribution from those pipelines to California, it's gonna be very confusing. And uh, of course, if those states um, face climate change, they're gonna need the water for themselves. Um, aquifer drilling, I don't think that this is very doable. It's um, not replenishable, not a smart idea. Fossil, waters, uh, fossil water takes millions of years and um, we should keep the groundwater to ourselves. Um, cloud seeding, again, this is a really weird idea of <laughs> feeding the clouds so that they can start raining. It's something that's been done before. Um, North America uses it, Canada and US for their ski resorts sometimes, and China is the largest system in the world to use it. Um, what scientists say is that California is actually, for the last several hundred of years, been um, in, a state of, in a state period of wet conditions and now is going to normalcy. So this is actually what, used, what it used to be like before. And no climate records prove it, but they say that there's approximately one year of water left. And it's the even more golden state now. <laughs> um, I think we should help counter the drought. And as a matter of fact, two days ago, as most of you guys probably already know, the Governor Jerry Brown mandated a statewide water restriction by 25%. And I'll leave you with this picture here. And um, I think that this glass of water is now worth more than gold that brought people to move to California in 1849 for the gold rush. And um, I think that if we were to, you know, it, it was unthinkable in 1969 to go fly to the moon and be there, and we didn't think that it was possible, but I think today, in 2015, I think it's possible to, become, to come up with a plan that will desalinate the water for, for the people of California. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you.